Welcome back, everybody, to the Sharpshooters Podcast, a special edition episode. Got a uh, big interview from a very dope, dope person in the industry right now. I think he's definitely the rising star in this business, man. Y'all definitely need to keep an eye out for him. And I and we got a lot of uh, close connections that we learned uh, about each other so far, man. So I. Can't wait to learn a little bit more about him. And we talk some football. On three national recruiting analyst, Mr. Philip Deuce, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, man. I appreciate, I appreciate it, man. What's going on? No much, dog. Man, I just appreciate you even coming on the show. Too easy, man. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah, man. Like I was saying, man, we was talking before all this. And, of course, I told him I was from Tuskegee. And he know a lot of uh, my Tuskegee people. So a lot of my uh big homies. So oh, yeah, man. He already yeah. good with me. Yeah, got to hey, hey, if you anywhere on that side of 85 South, like I was, you gotta know about them four six boys. <laughs> and see, I ain't even had to say nothing about that. And he already said it from right, no, I know about that four six. Oh, sure. you know, yeah, man. You solid yeah. with me forever for that, man. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. So of course, I appreciate you uh even joining the show talk about this uh recruiting and unfortunately ladies and gentlemen he's an Auburn guy <laughs> Auburn grad too unfortunately but it's all good man so since we uh already talking about Auburn I said talk about some of these Auburn recruits uh Andrew Babaloa now I see you guys had him uh this weekend this past weekend and they keep saying he Tita Titan between uh Stanford and Auburn, which is so weird to me. Yeah, I, I don't even know where that came from. But uh the craziest thing is that what made it a small world. I didn't know he had a brother that went to test that goes to Tuskegee University. So right. that's a big part of uh why Auburn is up there, so he can be close to his brother. Right. But what are your uh thoughts on him? I think Auburn got a shot at it. Um if it comes down to uh, NIL, ain't nothing Stanford can do with Auburn. Zero. Um, mm-hmm. I think uh, I, I just don't see them letting him get out of the Midwest without a fight. He's too good of an athlete, too good of a player. So I could, I think you'll start to see Oklahoma continue to push. I think they were one of the early leaders. Um, I think you can see Texas get involved. Um, I, they're not going to let him just walk to Auburn. They're going to make it hard on him. Um, so I think that uh, – I think Auburn is really well positioned. They got that first OV which I thought was important uh, to make an early impression. And the way that Jake Thornton recruits and the profile of frame that he's recruiting, he's a must-have for this class. He's not just getting just the huge guys and the guys that you – sometimes you see when they go to school, they got to lose weight automatically. They're getting guys who have good weight already that you can kind of add to. Uh, DeAndre Carter is probably the only guy that I thought that probably was like an oversized guy that they would want to lose weight. But usually they're getting big athletic guys that you could throw a few pounds on so they can get to that second level and uh, they can pass protect well. And, and, and really what Auburn likes to do in their pass sets is move the pocket. So you're going to have to have those athletic athletic guys with feet. And I think he's one of them. So I think I like Auburn's side here. I really do. Oh, yeah, man. And do you think if they – do you think he – because I know from a lot of guys, they say offensive linemen, it takes them some time to, like, adjust to the game, especially with, uh, like, Alabama, Caden Proctor. It took them, like, pretty much the whole season to, like, adjust to the game and the speed and all that. Do you think he's a day one starter where he has to sit if he uh comes in? I think he's a day one player, maybe not starter. I think he's a day one player. Maybe by the end of the year he could start, like – it's just so physical in the SEC. You have to be a, like to 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 start an offensive tackle in the SEC. You really, if you think about it, you're coming from high school against guys who had their their bodies changed for years. When you look at the guys, as soon as they get, the, if you look at the freshman classes, when they the guys who go home who go to school early in January, when they come home in the summer, they always look ten times different, and it only takes six months of it. So imagine guys getting that dramatic of a change in their weight conditioning program for years and years and years. You coming out of having six months of it, well, they've got 18 months of it or 24 months of it, and Mm -hmm. then you want this guy to play on the same level. 
So I think it's hard just because of how physical the position is. If you notice last year, Kane Lee was able to play early because it was more of a skill position. I think mm -hmm. skill guys are a little a little bit more well positioned to play early. But if there was a guy in this class that Auburn would play early who has the body and the frame that's ready, he's probably the closest one to being ready. Okay. Yeah, man, because I, I just kept hearing about him because I know the uh, – I think the golden goose of the whole uh, class is David Sanders, but we're going to get to him a little right. bit later. But so – but they pretty much saying he's like the second behind him. So I'm starting to uh, recruit a lot of guys, man. I don't want to see him do it, but Hugh Freeze is doing a uh, great job out there. Of course, getting Cam Coleman and getting uh, Perry Thompson – so, man, slowly but surely, Auburn is just uh, getting guys in there. I just think they're a quarterback away from being, like, some good contenders. But, of course, another guy on the list that we have for that we're going to bring up later. But another guy out – well, a guy out the state, uh, Alvin Henderson. So, I'm not going to lie to you. I was really, really surprised when he uh, committed to Penn State. With surprise, I, I I probably wasn't paying attention so close to it, but uh, I thought Auburn had him. But of course, it's not uh, the end of the road. Uh, national the early uh, national signing day is in December, and I believe Auburn's going to uh, find a way to uh, get him. And he's just right down the road, so they don't really need officials. He can just keep making these uh, unofficial. What do you uh, think of y'all chances of flipping him? Yeah, I think they're very high. I think it, it just it just makes sense, right? Um, I understand. Mm -hmm. Especially, I think it gets even higher if Auburn has a decent year this year. So I think, uh, yeah, when I talk to him, it sounds like a lot of things about Auburn. I think he likes James Franklin. I think he likes the running backs coach, and I think he likes the running backs that are in that backfield. But I also think that he start he understands the financial ramifications that come with being a home ground talent in Auburn, down the street from Auburn. Um, and also how bad Auburn wants him and needs him. Uh, when you look at the Auburn running back room, after next year you got Cobb, uh, possibly Damari Austin, and that's about uh, that's about it. So he, he has an opportunity to play early. Um, a lot of people make a lot about saying he hasn't played against a lot of good competition. But when I see him camp, and when I just look at his uh, his, his the, when I look at his physical attributes and how he relates how his skill set relates to the college game. I think he'll be a good, I think he'll be a good running back. Um, I think he's got great vision, which I think is the, the most important uh, aspect yeah. or, or, or tangible skill that people don't talk about is man, your vision. And I think he has that in space. So yeah, I think he's a, a great player. And I also think that Auburn probably, he probably ends up in Auburn's class. If not Auburn, Florida state, but I don't think he's going to Penn state. Oh yeah. Cause that was it. I think the only thing that is really holding him back, which everybody keeps saying, is just he hasn't really seen like running backs in Hugh Freeze's system that just go on and just do bigger things. So I think he's just waiting to just see how they have just to see how they progress throughout the year. And I, I can't even tell you uh how like Cobb and them boys about to be this year. Jaquez. Do y'all still got uh Hunter out there? Yeah, hundred, yeah, hundred, hundred came back. Yep. Yeah, so that y'all had a running back. I I just got to see it, man, because I I can't remember Hugh Freeze like really having like he's really known for uh running back, but he definitely known for those wide receivers. Definitely. Yeah, sure. I think so, uh, being no, I think I think his wide receiver pr prowess is going to help the running backs, right? Like last year, you didn't have to respect anybody. Like basically, it was just like man, they not finna throw the ball on the perimeter. You can load eight in the box, and that's hard to beat guys when they do that. And the way that they – the way they kind of got around that or, or, they, or they circumvented that was by quarterback run. And uh, if you keep that quarterback run at, uh, aspect and um, just kind of hit on your perimeter passes, everything on the outside, man, they, they, they'll they be fine, I I think. I mean, now they don't have no running back room like Alabama. Like, Bama running back room so stacked this year. But I think if you – like this year, they got a chance. They, they're really in it with uh, Henderson. They're really in it with Usman Chroma out of Lee County. So I think mm -hmm. those are two guys that they had been on. I think – now, I think they probably would have had both. If Cadillac was still there, they would have had both already. Like, they both would have been committed, in my opinion. 
But I think uh, Derrick Nix had a little bit of an uphill battle when it came to those two. And, um, yeah, I think, I think uh, as far as the running back situation and Alvin Henderson's situation, I think he ends up at Auburn. Yeah, I think, bro, one of the biggest losses that you guys had, I believe, was Cadillac. Great recruiter, just outstanding coach, man. I, I, I thought that was a major loss uh, for Hugh Freeze. And hopefully he can make up ground with that because, of course, how uh, beloved Cadillac is down there. So we'll see, Absolutely. man. So Absolutely. we'll see. And one thing that we, we keep talking about, only thing that really concerns me with Auburn is their quarterback play. And it could they could land a big fish. And this one of the big fishes, which I'm still surprised they are in the running for. But, of course, I can see the intrigue for him to uh, want to come play for Auburn. One, the playing time. I don't. I don't see nobody starting over him if he comes. Uh, the NIL money, uh, just being in this type of offense. Then you get to throw to Cam Coleman and Perry Tom. It's 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 a lot of stuff lining up for uh, Juju, and then of course with uh, Prime down in Colorado which I feel like a lot of people are just hating on Prime for no reason. Yeah. But that's a whole nother story. What you – uh, how confident – well, let me ask you this. Where do you see Juju – what do you think about Juju? Where do you feel like he's going to end up at? Because I, I am 100% positive he's not going to be at USC. It's just no way possible. Yeah. And And how confident you are – about your pick where he's going to end up landing? It's it's so hard for me to make a pick at this point just because I mm -hmm. think it's going to continue to change based on how these official visits go. Uh, as a player, I think if he was a couple inches taller, he probably would be the highest rated recruiter all time. The only thing holding him back is his height. I think he's like right around the six feet, six one area. So that that's the only thing. But his 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 he's not a freakish athlete, but he has functional mobility. But I never seen anybody a kid with that type of poise and processor. He processes things and he makes the reads that he's supposed to read. Last year, all he really had on the perimeter was uh that was ready ready was uh Caleb Odom who was a tight end uh, slash receiver. This okay. year he's got this year he's got weapons on weapons at uh mm -hmm. at Carrollton. So you're going to see he's going to put up some really freakish video game type numbers. They loaded up for his last year. He's being coached by one of the uh, Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence's uh, high school coach, who was at mm -hmm. Cartersville with Trevor Lawrence. So he's used to having those big time quarterbacks. So I expect him to have a huge year, even with the reclass up. Um, as far as where he's going to school, Auburn has he's got a very selective list because they're a very selective family. Him, his father, TC, uh, TC Lewis runs a really tight ship on how Julian is marketed, who how he's talked to, um, how his time is spent. So all of these things play into the factor of where it makes the most sense. L.A. made sense as far as USC because, you know, they use the term Hollywood, but he's as Hollywood as a, of a uh, – or, or when I say Hollywood, I don't even mean it in a in, in a bad way. I mean, he's a walking mm -hmm. star. You know what I mean? He's yeah. got a Travis Scott NIL deal already. Uh, he's mm -hmm. got the look. He deals uh, – One, of, I, I'm not sure if he signed with him, but I think he does – he's done some NIL business with the Athletes First and David Muligata who – Got Deshaun Watson, the best contract in NFL history, fully guaranteed, and just got Antoine Winfield pay, Jr. paid. So he's dealing with those type of guys. So some of the people who don't feel like – some people feel like, oh, well, I don't know if him having that type of show is around him would fit in Auburn. Um, do I think Auburn would do what it took NIL-wise to get him? 1,000%. I don't, I don't even blink an eye. I know what Auburn working with. It, with they Auburn got a bag of NIL. They want to mm -hmm. win. That collective wants to win. I mean, we think about Yellowwood, Jimmy Rain. Like they, they'll figure it out. Like, it, like it ain't. I think that's Alabama's only billionaire that lives in the state. If I ain't mistaken. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I think, uh, I think Southern Cal has an opportunity um, based on what they do. Um, and what they come up with NIL wise, but I just think his best fit is probably Colorado. Um, when it comes to the celebrity that he already has and being able to be mentored by somebody like Coach Prime, I think that's a great fit for him. Uh, that offense, 
right? Well, he won't have to run it. He probably he won't be running it a lot. You know, he probably has about the same functional athleticism as a Shador, even though he may not be as tall. But with his quick release, I don't think he'll take a, as many hits as Shador. Like Julian Lewis releases is, is very quick, and his processor is fast. And I think right now he'll start with a higher floor um, than Shador had coming out. So mm-hmm. yeah, if I, if I had to make a pick, I would probably right now, as of today, I would probably say Colorado. But I think Auburn has a real shot, and I think they probably. <clears throat> this is just my prediction. Yeah, guess this is my guess. This ain't even a prediction. I like what Colorado sits right now, but I think all I, I it's too hard to make up. I don't think he's going to Indiana, even though now that coach from Indiana was uh his the, the, that assistant coach that he likes. Uh, I think uh Sun Siri, I forgot his name, maybe Tino Sun Siri. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If he was if he was still at Alabama, he would be going to Alabama. Oh. That you just broke my heart with that because that was gonna be <laughs> my next question. When what are our chances of landing him? I think because Caleb Odom is there, uh, got that's pretty much the only connection. But oh man, that that hurt my feelings right there. I think I think but, y'all got a real good shot at getting Deuce Knight, man. And I I ain't gonna lie to you, dog. If, just me just catching up on, on him late, dog. He's that dude for real. He's that dude. Yeah, so, not cold. And so I ain't gonna lie. If we miss out on Juju, that's fine. We got other guys, but yeah. they're still still recovering from uh Cole Saban retiring. And I ain't gonna lie, man, that was probably the longest month just seeing guys go out the door. So they're just like, man, who wants to be here? Right. Yeah. So I like that, man. Like how you broke that down, especially if he go to Colorado, is one of the big stars. Ever, of course, we grew up on Prime, right? And it's no bigger star, and then you got the spotlight on him. I think Prime can handle all that, so whatever he brings, it, it won't be bigger than Prime, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, another guy, Mr. David Sanders, the uh, crown jewel of this class for a lot of folks, of course. Uh, uh, Georgia just had a uh, scavenger hunt this past weekend, looking at uh, Ohio State, Clemson up there as a top contender, uh, because that's his home state, Alabama, and I think he about to have official visits for all of them. As of right now, for one, do you think? I know, I'm not. Do you see him? I can see him. The size, the quickness, and everything. I think when it's his time to go to the NFL draft, I believe he can be the first overall pick. Yeah, that's he, how. Yeah, he, he he's a dog, man. I can't lie to you because I was just like, they just love talking about this kid. And then you just watch him and just like, okay, maybe he is that dude for real, man. <laughs> so whoever gets him, I believe they're going to be well protected on that blind side. But what yeah, you think sure. about? Him? Nah, David Sanders, man, I saw him last year at Under Armour Camp in uh, Atlanta when he came down. There were some guys in that last class that he was up against. And, uh, man, I just I just think, like, he's got NFL written all over him, man. Uh, a little thicker than, uh, like, he kind of reminds me, like, his body type, like a Charles Cross slash Laramie Tunsil, like, in that range. Um, mm-hmm. Man, when you see him get to the second level, he just decimates people. And then uh, even just when he comes to his uh, when it comes to his uh, kick slide and his pass set, he's 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 phenomenal, man. I think if anybody could play year one, it would be him. I would hope that he wouldn't have to play in a real. I I, I would love for him to be a swing tackle year one before he steps into that role for years two and three, and pretty much just kind of solidifies one side of your line. But yeah, I think he's a phenomenal prospect. I think it's gonna be a Georgia Clemson type deal. Georgia Clemson, Ohio State, like you said. Um, I just don't see. I don't know, man. I think he grew up a Clemson fan. I think uh, Steve yeah. Wilfong said that he grew up like having like Clemson uh, shower curtains, like. Um, so we'll that see. Man. A lot. Yeah, I just think, but man, if it's anybody, I think Georgia will break the bank for it to be him. Nil Georgia's nil collector. Yeah, and I don't want to see him go to Georgia at all. I like, man, come on now, it's already yeah. enough. And I was like, damn, man, this 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 a bad boy right here. <laughs> this is a like, bad so- boy. 
yeah, the more and more they they the more and more they talk about him, it's just like, hey man, I see. I just want to see him uh in person just to get like the full experience of him because everything I've been watching been on YouTube and stuff like that. But you guys do a great job at on three just covering these guys, man. So definitely shout out to y'all on that. I appreciate it. One of the guys that I'm very, very high on in this class, Mr. Six Foot Four, Dejon Lee, out there in California, man. I feel like this is a must have for Alabama because I love the secondary out of all the positions in the uh on the football field. And I believe we need this guy. I believe he's a lockdown corner. And I believe if he does not start day one, he's definitely going to start as a sophomore. I believe he has star potential. I'm not going to say he's Pat Sertan because Pat Sertan was just different. <laughs> that was just – you already knew he was just destined for the NFL and superstardom, and that's what he's doing right now. But I I just love everything about this kid. So I just want to know your thoughts on him. Yeah, six four kid. Um he's got I think he's I think he's a he's more twitchy, more explosive than Richard Sherman when it comes to like straight line speed. Um from the West Coast, so that Sherman, uh that Sherman comparison is, is gonna come up with his height. But uh a guy that who I thought he played who 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 was at Alabama but kind of blossomed at Oregon was a uh, Kyrie Jackson, who kind of had mm-hmm. some of that same length, uh, where you saw what he could do at certain times when he was on time and on schedule. And I think at Alabama, like sometimes you might say Kyrie get lost a little bit in the defense at times, but mm-hmm. when he got to Oregon, he got it all figured out. He parlayed that into a, a fairly high draft grade where he did okay in the draft. So I think Dijon Lee is a guy as far as um, the more he continues to develop physically, if he's able to maintain that speed, he won't have to move to safety. Uh, right now, um, I think, yeah, as far as being a tall corner, that works. You know, guys always get ready to try to move you out of that position, especially mm-hmm. when you have that type of limb. But I think he's he's a guy who could play it all, all three to four years in college. Yeah. So, yeah, man, only time will tell. We'll see about him. And I, I do like that uh, Kyrie Jackson thing because I, I was high on Kyrie. And I wish he stayed at Bama, but I'm glad he uh, got it together at Oregon. And hopefully mm-hmm. he can have a, a good NFL career. Shout out to him. Now, right. I'm going to ask you before uh, I uh, talk about my guys. Uh, any guys in the uh, 2025 class that you think everybody should have a, uh eye on? Like somebody you just think that is not getting enough coverage that everybody should – Really be watching in the 2025 class who getting slept on. I would probably say Bo Walker at um Cedar Grove. I think he might be going to Stockbridge this year. Mm-hmm. Committed to Georgia last year. That little Bo cold, dog. Like, um, short, he's a little short on the short side, uh, but he's got verified speed, uh, real. Four 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 three high four three low four four type guy, and I think um, whatever team gets him, like he committed to Georgia early. Georgia was like Shh, he can run, we are gonna take him, and uh, he he's not very highly ranked. I think he's like a three star, maybe a mid three star, something like that. But I mm-hmm. think uh, he, he he's a guy who's gonna out, outpace his ranking, definitely. Yeah, man, it'd be a lot of guys like that, man. I used to uh, feel that way. I think when we got um, when we got Smitty. Yeah. Uh, at Alabama, I was like, man, you just look, turn on the field. He just skinny, bro, but he just killing everybody at the wide receiver position. And you see <laughs> right. what he did. And you see what he did at Alabama winning the Heisman. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> turning up with the Eagles. So, yeah, man, I always uh, love them diamonds in the rough, guys. And since we on uh 2025 class, uh, one of the guys, Dalen, uh, Upshaw down in central Alabama, where uh, one of my partners, Phil, coaches the wide receiver. Shout out to Phil. Man, he is definitely one of those underrated wide receivers in the state. And he was definitely overshadowed by Cam Coleman, of course, how big his star was. But he did 
great behind uh, being the second option, getting over a thousand yards, getting fifteen touchdown. This is senior year. I think he got uh, offers from uh, UCF. No, uh, yeah, UCF, Auburn, just to name a few. I think he has one from Florida, if I'm not mistaken. But mm-hmm. his the rankings don't show for him right now. He's one of my uh, favorite wide receivers. I had to tell Phil many, many times, like, it's going to be a lot of eyes on him when right. uh, when the spotlight on if he keep uh, working hard. Yeah, absolutely, so, man. He go like 5'11". What are you about, like 185, 180, something like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Straight uh, down, man. I yeah, believe yeah, he's he, dog. Yeah, I, I think but, I think he, he's one of those kids that does a lot of things well. Like he doesn't have like one plus attribute. He just does everything well. He's just a football player and almost like a Smitty almost, right? Where Smitty wasn't the fastest, he wasn't the biggest, he wasn't the tallest. He just put it all together and he, he just does everything the right way. So I see a lot of those traits at Upshaw. Yeah. And he gonna make plays. But sure. definitely one of the kids I wanted to talk about. Mr. Marquez Daniels, man. Just, ladies and gentlemen, 2026. I pray to God he stays at wide receiver because I believe he's that next great one to come out the state of Alabama. I don't think he's ranked uh, on you guys' uh, site right now. But my God, he's going to shoot up them rankings. And I'm just telling you so you can get <laughs> – I'm glad. First dibs on him, man, because I'm telling you, just remember what I tell you. When it's all said and done, I I, I just pray to God he don't go to Auburn of all places. <laughs> but but if he does, man, he's that one. He's yeah. that one, man. He's just straight dog. Uh, just I don't even. I don't want to use Calvin Johnson, man. That type because I think Calvin Johnson. It's just special, but I'm just talking about if you throw it up, he's going to catch it. He is that right. dude, and he plays defense, play free safety, and he just watching the whole field, man. He he's just an overall football player. I just love the kid, man. Now that's good. You put me on on that one, man. I'm gonna go watch him when we get finished. Yeah, so hopefully, uh, one day, uh, when you uh interview, him, I'll be like, man, there we go. I yeah. already know you official now, but he, he that's the guy you need to keep your eye on for real. For I, I real. Will. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell him sharp, put me on too. Oh, yeah, I appreciate you, my brother. Absolutely. But, but since I got you on here, man, I just don't want to talk about straight football. My dog from the A, yes, sir. Yeah, so I told him I wanted to talk about some music, man. So just, just, just test my guy, of course. He, a lot older than me. I ain't gonna say no ages. <laughs> a lot older than me, but not. Hey, I'm too good, much. man. I'm, hey, man. I'm, 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 I'm a happy. <laughs> yeah. I'm a happy forty-one. I know yeah. so many folks that didn't make it this this far. I mean, <laughs> hey, yep. I Boy, what brother. you say? I know too many folks ain't making yeah. it. Here. So, I'm thirty-two. He forty-one. And yeah. You ain't lying about that one. For sure. So you just being from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna ask you, plain and simple. You got outcasts. Or you got good emo. They right, Alcad man. Yeah. Got got to go, Alcad. They right there with me. They with me right now. Two old boys in the Cadillac. You feel me, man? And you got the bobber here from the Atlanta Braves night. Oh my god, yeah. bro. You know, I, you I, know, I ain't playing. Yeah, oh, man. I ain't. That was one night. Uh, the Braves game that I still regret that I missed, man. When it was bobblehead night. Yeah, the oh, Alcad bobblehead. Yeah, man. Like, um. Really, too, I'm a little bit biased, man. Like, one of my good friends um, was in uh, in a group signed to them. Uh, well, Purple, well, Big Boys label, Purple Ribbon, uh, Concrete, my boy C-Bone, and the R.I.P. <laughs> Supernate. That's what a good buddy of mine, too, man. Uh, he mm-hmm. just passed away last year. But, um, yeah, man, I just go cash just because they broke, they kicked the door in. And then uh, Andre's Evolution, uh, watching him turn into, a, like, a supernova of a star. I just mm-hmm. thought that was like real dope. So now good good to mob a close second, man. You know, I love I mean, you know, it's all that's almost like picking between children. Like they the same to me. But if I if you told me I just had to go with one or the other, what I've listened to more of, probably mm-hmm. be outcast. Man. I, AT, AT, AT aliens for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my, definitely. 
Yeah, that's that's Man. my favorite Outkast album. I promise you, dog. I, that was where I was about to go with it. I was about to say which one we going with, <laughs> Aquemini or that AT Aliens? I said AT Aliens is my favorite, man. Yeah, me too. AT Aliens is my favorite. Man, ninety six so, was such a good year in Atlanta, man. You know the Olympics was here. I was mm-hmm. eighth grade going to ninth grade, man. That that album dropped, man. It's like I never and we was waiting on the Outkast that we heard in the the year in ninety at the end of ninety four. So mm-hmm. it was like, all right, it's coming back. They, the player and the poet, the font, whatever. They draw that wheels of steel. Mm-hmm. Man, that it, that intro, man. You made it. Mm-hmm. Man, they snap, boy. You, you yeah, know yeah, what you're talking yeah. about. You know what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. That's why I said, man. And just AT Aliens, one of the uh, hardest songs on there, of course. But uh, the, the title track went crazy. Yep. Oh, yeah. But I think um, I said this many, many times. It ain't the greatest uh, rap group. I just think they are the best group ever. I yeah. would die on that hill, man. I would yeah. die on that hill. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. man. UGK versus 3-6 Mafia. Man, the pimp in the bun. Man. The pimp oh, in the man. Bun. I, I like lyrics so much. I ain't saying three six ain't had no lyrics, but man, just based off two songs, my two of my favorite songs ever. One, my my probably favorite song was produced and made by Pimp C, man. It was a solo song, Top Notch Hold, man. That's like mm-hmm. one of my favorites ever. And then you think about Take It Off, um, that was on the uh it was the soundtrack that was on. I, I think that. What no, nah, that wasn't on the bud around. That was um it was something like in '99. It was um what's the name of that movie? It was like the, the connector or the, uh, the equalizer the, uh, hold on, mm. it was it was some it was something like that. Um some some like action movie uh that you wouldn't think that song was gonna be on it. Hold on, I'm gonna tell you right now. I, yeah, man, because the corrupt the corruptor soundtrack. Probably never seen that movie, but that's what the soundtrack it was on. Mm-hmm. But when I heard it, man, I was in eleven. I'll never forget. I was in eleventh grade, man. You know, we first started driving, and uh, I, man, that that was the song. It was that, and that came out the same time that uh, Juvenile was going crazy with four hundred degrees. So mm-hmm. it was that and that for me. But then even that, then you talk about uh, Bun B verse on murder. Bro, stop, bro. Top tier, yeah, top man. tier. Yeah, so and I love three cities, man. I, I like I like yeah. a lot of what they did, but yeah, if I, if I had to choose, definitely give me UGK. See, the thing is, man, um, the the reason why I think around those times, of course, I'm like super young, like seven, seven, eight, and nine. But the best part, like all my older cousins around mm-hmm. that age, and I was around their homeboy, so I got exposed to a lot of that with Fiend, Mystical, yeah, Pastor yeah. Troy. Drama, yeah. all yeah. those dudes, like a lot of guys didn't know about. Like, man, this is all I listen to because I, I yeah. can't control that, and that's right. all no, they let no, me man. listen to. I wouldn't have a man. I feel like I grew up in a golden era of, of southern music. You feel me? Like, especially being in was, high school, and you be like, man, that new thing when No Limit was dropping tapes every week with different colors, mm-hmm. you had to go find. Like, that thing came out of that Mac album, even me and X album was hard, C Murder album was hard. Kick though with uh UGK, mm-hmm. but Master P literally butchered that song with ad libs. You gotta go back and listen to it now. It sounds so ludicrous. It sounds so crazy now. If you go back and listen to every ad lib Master P was saying as an adult, but yeah, man, uh, great times, man, great memories. But yeah, to answer your question, I gotta go. Uh, the pimp in the bun, man. And see, the crazy thing is, I think before uh. Bun always been uh one of my favorites ever. Yeah. Like a lot of guys always love Pimp C. I'm like, bro, why y'all love Pimp C so much, bro? I like man, Bun is where he's at, man. Bun is the one that be snapping, man. Even though yeah. uh Pimp is the face of it, but Bun yeah. is uh best, but they all they bring it, they like peanut butter and jelly, man. They there they just go. go together so well, dog. And yeah. now I say, uh whoa. What was that song, bro? Oh my God. Uh Swishers and Doja. Man. Oh my goodness. 
Yeah. You talking about, oh my God, I played that song out so much, man. <laughs> That's when I first got my license. Boy, I'm talking about, boy, I played that song so much in man. my mama Nissan Altima, boy. <laughs> right there, all. Oh, yeah, man. man. Great. Yeah, it, ain't, it ain't nothing like your theme music when you first get behind the wheel, dog. Yeah. Because yeah. one of the guys, easily still one of my favorite rappers ever, T.I. versus Luda. I don't think who you got. So there you go. I, I don't I don't first album I ever bought Urban Legend. Oh my god, man. I, you had I, to hear with Tip, man. You had to hear with Tip dropped on serious. Yeah. Oh first year in college. Me. Man, you no boys in the trap first. been played so much, man. man. <laughs> oh my god, man. No boys yeah. in the trap still get played to this day. But what the album tilt was cool, but mixtape tilt with PSC. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, man! The hardest song of them, uh, all of them mixtapes, was uh Heavy Chevy's. Heavy Chevy was so hard, man. man. I see, man. I wish um I had one of my partners on here. We was just debating about that. He say Heavy Chevy's. I say uh Do Your Thing is uh is the best one. Yeah, I like. I, I like, like that one I like boy, all them. country had one that was so hard. Still country on in the streets three. Mm -hmm. Man, I, man, I played the paint off that tape. You hear me? Yeah, off man. that CD, bro. Yeah, 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 man. And, and Luda from California too. Like you know what I'm saying? But I just, I, I feel like I just resonated strong, most strongly with, uh, with Tip, man. And shout out to Luda, and, and you know, and uh, DTP. Like I got a lot of folks, big random folks, a lot. But yeah, just for music purposes probably go with tip yeah man I, that was I like i still man it took me a long time to get over man because i feel like uh luda cheated on that uh stomp yeah. song and yeah. tip already had his verse and so he heard it now he just coming right behind him this and, and i ain't like that bro. i felt like tip would have went harder if he uh knew uh luda was gonna do that Man, you so, know Tip, man. Man, I, man, you know, man. Tip with a power drive, that man. He, he, just, he, he just, he just, he just took the long route. Like Tip, Tip also played a lot of chess. Have you noticed the hardest diss ever on Tip? Never got responded to. That was when Gucci uh went crazy on Tip. Oh, uh, and uh, what kind of king? Oh my goodness, that's one of the mm -hmm. hardest disses ever. I don't know, if, man. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard it. You gotta go back and listen to what, man. Go to I YouTube. Can, not out the top of my head. Not out the top bro, of my head. Bro, look. Do yourself a favor. Go to uh YouTube and search what kind of king. This is Fat Gucci, and he is going insane on Tilt. And what happened was, uh, they say Tilt called a label and uh got Gucci to apologize on the radio. Like, but outside of that, you know, and Gucci always took shots as Tilt afterwards, but mm -hmm. he apologized that time, so Tilt never had to respond. I don't think Tilt wanted to respond. And this was so disrespectful, bro. Like, Gucci is one of the best diss artists. He just say anything like, "Oh yeah, your mama, your daddy." Your yeah, like, he just, I'm like, we yeah. already seen with that versus. <laughs> How crazy! Yeah, he don't care. He don't care. I mean, like, yeah. So, but now, nah, man, tilt, 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 changed a lot in Atlanta, man, and they don't give him his credit. So, man, shout out to tilt, man. I got two more for you, but I'm gonna say that one uh, for last. Right. But uh, since since you keep bringing up Gucci, Gucci or Jeezy, what? And I love Jesus. I, I, I think, man, let me tell you something. Man, Air, Air Forces is probably my one of my favorite songs of all time. That Jeezy Air Forces went so crazy. And Jeezy got hits after hits put on for my city. Mm. And all the work that he did with Drummer Boy. Uh, way too gone with Mike Will. Like, trust me. But, man, don't nothing hit like, I'm starting on my day with a blood of perk. <laughs> No pancakes, yeah. but sir, hey man, making soda pot and a silver sport. <laughs> you already know, really it's know it's time hey, to go to work, man. I ain't gonna on, lie, to you. I, I I believe they told me on that song, bro. I, I just felt like he was just going crazy just behind the desk, bro. Yeah. Like, oh my god, that yeah. is one of the hardest beats ever. <laughs> that man. was one of the hardest beats ever, dog. Man, Shut what? Yeah, I, I got it. Yeah, I gotta go whop on that one. Now, Gucci really, really got hits, bro. He really does. 
But my oh, yeah. personal preference, if I gotta say which one I'm gonna listen to more so than the other, I'm probably go walk. But if I just had to pick my favorite song of the two, it'll be uh Air. I, I, I really love love that beat on Air Forces, bro. That beat is incredible, bro. Oh yeah. Now this is my uh last one. Got one Atlanta guy. And I promise you, dog, I used to play the mess out of this man. Got PT Cruiser, Pastor Troy. Yeah. And one of my favorites of all time. I think everybody in the South love this man. Project Pat. Who you going with? I go with Pat, man. And I love, okay. I love, I, 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 <laughs> bro, Troy, Troy, my, they used to call, man. You get Jason Campbell on the phone right now. He might call me Pastor Troy right now. He's calling me Truck. I, when I got to school, Willow Street, they's called me there too. Like when I got to school, I used to have a long goatee. And mm -hmm. uh, man, them first year or two, uh, Pastor Troy, when he hit with We Ready, they came back with like Move to Mars and mm -hmm. uh, Vice Versa and all of that. That little era, them two, three years right there from, well, really from 98 to like 2001, 2002. Mm -hmm. Incredible, but man, Project Pat Giddy Green Cheese and Dope, man, bro. That you album, talking about the song, yes, bro. Man, that album is incredible, bro. I don't think I that's one of the most slept on albums ever, bro. Project Pat Getty Green, mm -hmm. we're gonna rumble in this hole, man. Yep. Man, yeah, man it, 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 it just it's so many uh classes from that man uh i i know for a fact i play life we live probably once a week man because it's just like bro i don't know what this man was on when he uh recorded this up but this man i project pat just doesn't get the credit that he deserves they don't his own his own style too project pat uh yeah, yeah. Bruh, yeah. i'm just waiting on that tiny disc that tiny oh, dance that he did, man. oh my god, that man, is gonna they, be they, they, right man, there. that'd be that'd be too much light, right, bro? They they man, wouldn't let my boy get off like that. Hey, if they got uh Juvie up there, I believe they can get Pat up there. I, bro, I believe they can get anybody up there, and I believe this man deserves his due, man. He need yeah, his time good, in the sun. And that production on the album was so crazy too, bro. Top tier for real, for real. Man. Hold on, I'm going to man. No North Memphis out there choices, bro. Rinky Dink Records, you remember that? Mm -hmm. We can get you, a, we can get you a <laughs> 7, 000. seven thousand, seven yeah, thousand. Man, yeah, yeah, the yeah, intro yeah. to Don't Save Her, man, always used to get me, oh, bro. Because, because I know, I know some cats like, don't be. It, I love him, man. It, I love him. I love, love him, man. Bro. Oh my god, bro! It's so many simps out here just like that, bro. Like, oh my god, I'm a killer. I'm a marry. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Don't be that guy. Don't yeah, be man. that guy. Yeah, but man, that, yeah, that, man, that, that album classic, man. I got to give it to him just for that album. Oh yeah, man. For sure. Oh man, I just so glad you uh came on, man. Definitely appreciate it. I'm just glad that we know some of the same people. And all that. Oh yeah, we definitely uh gonna stay in touch, and hopefully uh one of these days you uh get an interview uh Marquez. What's up? If and, I do, uh, I'm, if if I do, I'm gonna tell him you the one to put me on for sure, for sure. Yeah, man. Um, he's just that dude, man. He's he's the one with the talent, man. He's the one uh putting himself out there. Even though I put you on, man, he's he's uh doing everything right to uh put himself out there. But man, I just appreciate you uh even coming on to the show. And this ain't gonna be the last time, dog. Because no, what's up, man. No, we locked in, man. Just let, just let me know. For sure, for sure. But we're gonna uh let the people uh know, let the people know where to uh go follow you at. Yeah, uh at Dukes the Scoop on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Dukes D Scoop. You can see it right there in the corner. But yeah, Dukes the Scoop, man. How at me, man. I I, I talk back. No, oh, yeah. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh Brinsky Sharp, B Sharp of the Sharpshooters Podcast. Appreciate all y'all for uh subscribing to the channel. And as always, we'll catch y'all next time. Peace.